Hey guys, in this week's version of We Find How We Train, we're gonna be taking a look at Errol Spence and his pad work and why his pressure when he fights is, is so high, why the amount of pressure he puts on is so high and how he's able to achieve it, okay? Now, first off, I want you to, we're gonna take a look at him fighting Mikey Garcia and I want you to take a look at how similar the pad work is to the actual fight. Okay, now what do I'm talking about? I want you to talk, what I'm talking about is each time he gets to the front foot, he makes an attack, okay? Every single time he gets here, it's either offense or it's defense, okay? Now he hasn't done defense yet. He's done a couple before, you know, but each time he gets to the front foot, right? There's something, pull counter here, but each time he gets to the line, it's some kind of an attack, right? Now we're gonna take a look at him fighting Mikey Garcia. And we're going to take a look at round two first, because this round goes really well for Errol Spence. So every time Errol Spence gets to the line here, he's going to be ready for Mikey Garcia's attack, okay? Now he gets hit to the body. I don't care about that. I want you to pay attention to the fact that every single time he gets to the front foot, he's ready to attack or to be attacked, right? He's ready. Doesn't catch that punch, but he has his guard up. He's ready each time he gets to the line, okay? This means that it's very difficult to sneak up on Errol Spence, okay? He understands the shoulder faint timing so well, okay? We're gonna break that down a little bit more when we get back to his training video, but what I want you to pay attention to is again, each time he gets to the, to the line on the front foot, he's ready to attack or be attacked. And now watch as Mikey Garcia enters the line here, Errol Spence is shooting his left hand now, right? Instead of blocking, now he gets to the line, and instead of blocking, he's shooting his jab. And now Mikey Garcia is going to make it to the front foot again, makes an attack. Errol Spence sees it coming. And then right back to his jab, right? Right back to that front foot. Now Mikey Garcia is trying to sneak up on him. No feint, no probe, no nothing. It doesn't work. Errol Spence is able to see that rhythm coming and then continue setting up his attacks. Make it to the front foot, defend, control, attack, defend, and again, Mikey Garcia having a very difficult time keeping up this pace because he doesn't actually fight at this pace, this, at this fast of a pace, right? Now, again, this all goes very well for Errol Spence, and this is very um, a consistent pattern in Errol Spence's fights, right? Doing pretty well with the with the pressure um, and being able to put on an incredible pace. Now we're gonna take a look again at the pad work that he's doing and the pace that he's putting on is each time he gets to the line, he's making an attack, doing something, right? Now, there are a lot of moving parts to this drill and in spite of the fact that I don't think he's doing everything correctly, this is an incredible pad work routine. And if any of you guys can uh, emulate it at home, um, I would highly recommend you practice some form of this, but don't make this the only way that you work the pads um, as he's mostly looking to practice walking in and getting into pendulum, right? And that's a big part of what he's doing is getting his weight to be ready to kind of pendulum forward as he kind of walks forward and throws his weight through his heels into his punches. And again, notice he's constantly taking a step with all these punches. Now, to kind of put some dots together, uh, as soon as his coach starts throwing punches at him, okay, what I want you to pay attention to is his coach's rhythm, okay? Watch as his coach moves on and off the line with him, okay? This is a very, very, very important idea in teaching the shoulder faint timing and teaching that you should be wary of your opponent's momentum as he meets you on the line, okay? Now, the one of the best fighters in history at this idea is Floyd Mayweather Jr. Uh, I don't think there's probably any fighter in history that's, uh, I don't want to say seen punches coming as well as him, you know, whatever, whatever. I don't want to say that, you know, but uh, I think that his timing is reflective of his understanding of the shoulder feint and understanding when your opponent's most likely attack is coming. Now, not only does Errol Spence get to continually practice this technique of the shoulder feint timing and learning it from his coach, right? But he gets to practice attacking off the shoulder faint timing as well as he continues to move his weight into the line, off the line, into the line, off the line, into the line, off the line, into the line with the punch, off the line, defense, into the line, off, right? And he gets to continually transition his weight into his pad work and out of his pad work. Now, as we watch his opponent or 
his coach, right? Meet him on the line. He goes off the line, on the line, right? And this is giving him the timing that he needs to be able to see the punches coming from Mikey Garcia, right? So think about his coach uh, being Mikey Garcia right now. It's Mikey Garcia goes from off the line, on the line, right? And this is the same pattern, right? And the same movement that he sees from his coach as his coach moves from off the line, on the line, off the line, on the line, right? To make those attacks, to show him this rhythm, to show him this pace so that when Mikey Garcia moves in front of him and when Mikey Garcia makes it to this position here, this is a right-hand feint, but Errol Spence is probably ready for it. And then he moves off the line and now he moves to the front foot and as he moves to the front foot, this is going to be a jab feint, right? Errol Spence is obviously ready. We can see that he's ready. So we can see the brilliance in his technique. And we can see the brilliance in um, how this pad work routine performs. Now we're going to take a couple of looks at the flaws in this technique and the flaws in this style. Now, number one, there's not a lot of head movement, okay? In fact, I would dare to say none. His head is very, very stationary, and that's because he uses so much of his movement, so much of his rhythm to be walking and stepping in with his big power punches. Again, Errol Spence is looking to optimize his size advantage against his opponents by using primarily power punches, right? It doesn't make sense for him to trade, you know, speed punches or combination punches with people who may be much smaller or faster than him. Right? It makes much more sense for him to throw big power punches because the likelihood that someone who's five foot six is going to be able to compete with him in power is, is very low, right? On average. Now, um, a few things I want you to pay attention to. Uh, again, the lack of head movement, right? Now, real quick, I want to kind of interject and um, I actually have a pad work routine. It's a nine punch drill series to kind of teach the fundamentals of positioning, position one, position two. What punches you're throwing on the front foot? What punches you're throwing on the back foot? How to, how to best optimize learning what you do on the front foot and what you do on the back foot and how to build those positions for coordination, speed, and power. Um, and uh, if you want to check it out, there's a link in the description. There'll be a link in the comments as well. Um, it's $149.99 right now, but I do have some promo codes going on. If you're an Aero Spence fan, uh, type in the truth to get your 20% discount. If you're a Pac-Man fan, type in Pac-Man promo code, uh, Pac-Man for 20% off from uh, the, the Vimeo package. It's $149.99. And it's not only gonna teach you guys uh, how to get better in your technique, how to improve your technique, more importantly than what's going on in the pads, how to improve your technique while you're doing it, no matter who's holding the pads for you, but it's also going to teach you how to hold the pads for you, but also how to hit the pads as well. It's going to teach you the best ways to and the best positioning um, and, and you know, all the mechanics so that you can learn to get the best workouts out of not only just your, your pad work routines, but also your boxing routines as well. As the theories and stuff that you take from the pad work, you're going to be bringing to your normal boxing as well, obviously, right? So... Um, check it out, link in the description. Um, and we're gonna take a look actually real quick, just a, a look. This is the first drill. This is my, my guy Theo. Uh, this is only the third time we've been working this drill and it's a repeatable drill. This is the first drill in the package. I just wanna practice these drills over and over and over again. Um, it's a very, very clever drill system that has nine drills total that kind of all come together at the end to really teach you um, actually to teach you exactly what Errol Spence is actually practicing on the mitts here, these pendulum kinds of attacks, moving into them, um, but actually how to, it also teaches you how to set them up from the line first. So it's actually very, very clever. So if you wanna check it out or you wanna learn the pads, you wanna learn how to hold the pads, you wanna learn how to hit the pads, um, and you wanna learn how to, the pads make sense for boxing, um, check it out, it's a great Vimeo series. Um, and if you wanna check out the comments, um, the reviews are great so far, so. Uh, let me know what you guys think too. Uh, yeah, anyway, getting back to the fight and the pad work. Another one of the problems that Errol Spence has 
is that he always has to be making this movement, okay? Now we're gonna take a look at this clip real quick here. As he's on the pads, right? He moves forward with the left uppercut, back, forward with the jab, back, and now he's gonna move forward, but his presence on the line is always predetermined, right? It's always perfunctory, as we always know he's gonna be walking into his punch. Now, his coach is showing him a right hook, but he thinks it's going to be a punch, right? So this is an opportunity in which uh, being on the line or being on the pads, there was a miscommunication or there was a this or there was a that, but he still moved into the line, okay? And that's an important idea because that means that even when Errol Spence isn't ready for an attack, his natural tendency to draw him forward through this, pa this pattern and this process is going to be present. We're going to take a look at a clip real quick of Danny Garcia taking advantage of this as Errol Spence has to continually be moving and pressing his weight forward here. Danny Garcia times him with this straight right hand. Now, this is a very, very, very common problem for Errol Spence for two reasons. Number one, he's always moving into the line there. He's always moving into these positions, into these punches, into this zone. But he's not moving his head, right? His head doesn't get off the line. And again, that's another thing that we address with his punch technique, especially in regards to this routine. Now we're gonna take a look at another clip from the Mikey Garcia fight in round five, in which the shoulder feint timing makes it predictable for Mikey Garcia to find him, right? As he moves to the line and controls, Errol Spence moves off. And then now Mikey Garcia is controlling, right? Or rather, Errol Spence is defending the line with the block. Now off the line, on the line, control. And now Mikey Garcia got a piece of that jab, okay? He was ready for that jab, which means technically he had control of this position when he met there with Errol Spence. So anything that Errol Spence does in this position, Mikey Garcia is easily going to see coming because he already had control of the lead hand. So now when that, right, that left hand comes from Errol Spence, Mikey Garcia is able to pull counter it and catch him with an excellent counter right hand here that actually stunned Errol Spence. And now we get to see the flaw in that defense as Errol, or as in that pad work and that style of training as Errol Spence has to continually try to bring his weight forward through that pattern, through that process, but he doesn't know how to get his head to the back foot, right? He doesn't actually slip to the back foot because all of his pad work is going forward, right? I mean, there is a little bit going backwards. There's a little bit, but we can see how he continually tries to press his weight on that front foot and he's getting stuck. And, you know, I'm nothing against Mikey Garcia in this instance, but there are a lot of opportunities there um, for a better fighter, a fighter with better footwork, a uh, fighter like Manny Pacquiao to take advantage, right? Now, again, the defense, right? Errol Spence's defense is going to be that shoulder faint timing and his ability to press you coming forward. Notice, he was just hurt by a big punch, and what does he do? He immediately looks to get control of the line by getting back to going forward, right? Getting his weight going forward and putting pressure on his opponents. Now, the last thing that I want to... Well, let's go take a look at again at the, the pad work. And again... A lot of really, really great work, but I want you to focus on the continual forward momentum and forward pressure, okay? Now, and again, when he misses an opportunity here to hit the pad, right? When there's a miscommunication and he moves off the line and then he moves onto the line with his opponent, if he's not, well, it does look like he shoots a jab here for control here. So he has good shoulder feint timing even when he fails his shoulder feint timing drill here, right? Controlling the line with that jab, he's poking it forward. He sure showed me. Very, very good boxing right here. And this is what, this is kind of showing that it's working, right? Understanding that he's meeting his coach on the line here. Now, again, the only problem with that is that he's always looking to meet on the line here. He's not always looking to get information before he gets here, right? There's not always a lot of fainting. There's not always a lot of probing. Um, but this is the drill. This pad work routine Combined with also the way that he hits the heavy bag as well, he uses a very similar um, heavy bag style. And we're going to be going over that uh, in the next video. But this pad work routine where he's constantly going forward. Now again, look at his hook. Notice when he throws this hook, his head does not move to the back foot, right? He does not transfer his weight to the back foot. When he shoots his straight left hand, he does not hardly transfer his weight to the front foot either. Okay? Very, very, very important ideas. 
Um, and those are going to be even more important when he fights Manny Pacquiao. And being able to slip is so much more important. Now, again, because of the way that he works this pad work drill, always on the line, always going forward, he doesn't leave himself a lot of space in the rhythm and timing of all that's going on in this routine to move his head and to learn to get his head off the line with his technique, okay? Um, and that's going to be very, very dangerous for him against Pac-Man. Um, now, the only thing is, is if Manny Pacquiao is not fainting and probing or punching Errol Spence in the face, this is exactly what the fight's going to look like. Errol Spence walking forward and finding these uppercuts, right? Hiding these uppercuts on the line and finding them on Manny Pacquiao. Okay, that's exactly what's going to happen. And eventually, if Manny Pacquiao sits on the ropes for any amount of time in any round trying to be Floyd Mayweather or trying to be like, oh, look, I'm on the ropes. It's dangerous, but I'm Manny Pacquiao. He's going to get knocked out. Okay, Errol Spence was not able to knock out Danny Garcia. He was not able to knock out Mikey Garcia, but that's because those guys did not sit on the ropes. Okay, I'm not going to... Say that, oh, his power is not necessarily there or this or that. If you sit on the ropes against Errol Spence because of this pressure, because he's getting this extra weight, this extra power into each of these punches, because he's always stepping with them, right? Think that pendulum motion where you carry your weight through your heel, okay? Just like Canelo was doing against Billy Joe Saunders, right? Only Canelo hits way goddamn harder. Okay, way harder. I don't know what Errol Spence is thinking that he thinks he's going to go up a bunch of weight classes and fight a guy who's five foot six, 190 pounds when the guys who are five foot six, 150 pounds are smacking him up, right? So I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea for him. Uh, but anyway, anyway, uh, it's an, a brilliant routine, but there are definitely some flaws and definitely some things to work on um, in. Uh, if he knew some of the rules in the pad work video that I have, uh, he could definitely improve on his technique, increase his explosiveness, increase his power, um, and find places on the, on the line to hide his head when he punches, okay? So anyway, if you're interested in learning any of that stuff, check out the Vimeo package. Uh, if you're looking for personalized coaching, um, you want to send in training videos, and I will analyze your training videos just as harshly as these ones for these pro fighters, Obviously, you're probably not going to have as few flaws, so there'll be you know wider things to work on. But uh, check out my Patreon. You send in your videos. You send in your jump rope routine, and I will help you work on your jump rope routine. I will help you work on your, uh, your shadow boxing, your heavy bag work, your double in bag work, and I will get you to the level of boxing that you want to be at, whatever level that is, okay? Um, and if you're interested, I work with pro fighters. I'm working with Chris Congo, I work with professional coaches, um, and I have my own fighters in my Patreon who are going pro as well. Um, and it's a great experience. So a lot of pro coaches, a lot of pro fighters. Um, and uh, if you're looking for full fight film studies as well, check out my Patreon. Uh, that's 10 bucks a month, 10 bucks to sign up, 10 bucks a month. Um, and there are hundreds of videos. And if you're a beginner and you wanna learn your basic technique, um, over the last year, I did, uh, like over 400 videos on Patreon with tons and tons and tons of training videos, tons of theory videos, tons of boxing seminars, um, all the stuff that, you know, other coaches on YouTube are starting to uh, be a part of my Patreon so that they can uh, put out their own videos copying my content. You know, no offense to them, you know, actually great offense, screw them, right? I was charging for it and they want to talk about how they have such a big brain, whatever, idiot. Anyway. <laughs> check it out. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff. And um, if you guys didn't notice, uh, Keith Thurman recently did a video about Errol Spence talking about how Errol Spence um, only has that shifty uppercut, right? He can come forward with the left hand or come forward with the left uppercut, um, and he only has that timing. So Keith Thurman is a fan of Fouts boxing. Check it out. Uh, anyway, thanks, guys.